Thank you, gentlemen. Good evening. How are you? I am, uh, I'm 32 years old, which is not old, but it is the start of not young. You just notice little things like you'll be in your car listening to the radio, you hear stuff like, that was an oldie from the Go-Go's. Ah! I was back home a couple of months ago trying to explain a dial telephone to my niece. There was a disc with holes on it. You turn them to make a call. I'm not crazy, stop laughing at me. You don't know what life in the 70s was like. I was there. To change the channel on the television, you had to walk across the room. Turn a knob with your bare hands like a monkey in a lab test trying not to get electrocuted, you know. I understand. I've been, uh, I've been seeing a girl for about uh, three years now. What's a restraining order? <laughs> you know, it's funny, you're with somebody for a long time and uh, you start getting hit on by women in bars. When you're single, nothing. It's the confidence factor. You have a girlfriend, you don't even realize it. You're walking through these bars like Cary Grant. Hello, darling, good to see you. No, I don't have time for drinks, but let's brunch on Sunday. And you'll look fabulous then because you look fabulous now because you're fabulous, end of sentence. <laughs> same bar, same people, but you're single. Suddenly you're Vincent Price coming through a trap door with a black cape and a hat. I couldn't help noticing you sitting alone. Why don't you look at me when I'm speaking to you? Look at me, look at my face. They did this to me. They did this to my face. Where are you going? Don't laugh at you're all doing jello shots or I'll kill you. All America loves the Vincent Price in a singles bar gag. I would love to be so famous that I was a prisoner of my own voice. You know. Don Knotts. Lovable guy, very talented gentleman. He can't make obscene phone calls. He'd like to. He's up at 2 a.m. in a dirty bathrobe. Well, I've been looking at you through the bedroom window. Is this Don Knotts? Ah! They know it's me every time. I remember the first girlfriend I ever had as a freshman in college. Late bloomer. Sarah Beach, my first girlfriend. And for Christmas break, we spend it at her parents' house. Now, the moral of this story is... Never let yourself become the object of someone else's rebellion. We get to her house, in, big house in Connecticut, nice people, a lot of money. Your dad was a doctor, invented blood, some god awful. <laughs> There's a little, a little stuff, you know. Sarah sleeps in the bedroom, Dana sleeps on the couch. Fine with me, your house, your rules, no problem. And out of nowhere, Sarah goes ballistic. She, Daddy! How can you embarrass me? I'm 18. It's not like back at school we don't sleep together every night. It's not like back at school we're not practically married. And, uh, that night, that night at dinner, her father was having like this barely contained nervous breakdown. I, I guess he'd never uh, let the image enter his mind before. But was, <laughs> I'm digging everybody, help yourself. Pile on the food, there's plenty. <laughs> oh, Danny, you must work up quite an appetite while you're having sex with my baby. <laughs> strike that, strike that. I, I don't know where that came from. <sighs> Do you enjoy having sex with my daughter? <gasps> Do you? Fruit of my loins, now the bounty of your beds. Bouncing on the sealy posturpedic like it's going out of style. Have some potatoes, man. Yes. No, 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 no. Candied yams look rather delightful. Probably not as rewarding as taking a bite of my baby's buttock, but one makes do. <laughs> Why don't you both have sex right now? <laughs> Chad, Terry, clear the table. The kids are gonna hump.
Worst sex I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> the end. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was Dana Gold, everybody.